All right, welcome back to part two of the Agamemnon game review. Today's footage is being recorded on the 30th of August, 2018 at 2.51 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Footage itself was captured on the 20th of August, 2018. Uh, as I was jabbering on in part one, I didn't realize the end of the footage was coming up. <laughs> so, uh, the video stopped and I was still talking. But not a loss as I can continue on on this part <laughs> through the magic of Adobe Premiere. But I was talking about um, at the end of the video that um, I'm trying to go from a defensive point of view with demonology. You know, my overall strategy is to be defensive as much as possible. Now, a person who's defensive isn't necessarily offensively weak. But, um... Your goal is to establish a defensive line, see what the enemy throws at you, and then des design your defense accordingly. And to really be defensive-minded as a demonologist, you have to really know what all your demons can do. So, just kind of go through those one at a time. Your main defensive weapon is your Void Walker. Your main offensive weapon is your wild imps or imps. That's why when you first start grinding uh, demonology, <laughs> the first pet they give you is an imp. And the second pet you end up with is a, um, a void walker. And uh, most of all your tank abilities are built into your void walker. <laughs> most of all your... Uh, DPS abilities are built into your imps. So, when you get further down the line, and you can start using your uh, Hand of Gul'dan, along with your Void Walker, that allows you to set up your basic defensive line. I always leave my Void Walker in defensive mode, because uh, in the event that a bunch of adds should start attacking me in the middle of the fight, I want to have a guard ability. And that's kind of what I use the Void Walker for. So I'm not going to use him to go out and just attack people. That's what the Imps in Hand of Gul'dan is for. One of the good things that they did with BFA from the Legion version of Demonology is that it um, used to be um, you could cast... Um, Hand of Gul'dan was a 1, 2, 3, or 4 shard ability. Now they reduced it to 3, so you can cast 1, 2, or 3. Now, there are times when 1, 2, or 3 might be more advantage, advantageous than bursting out with 3. <laughs> Although you don't really control that. In the sense that if you have 3 shards and you hit Hand of Gul'dan, it's gonna waste 3 shards. However, your um, Doom has a chance of gaining shard back. Your Shadow Bolt has a definitely will generate one, and then your Demon Bolt will generate two. And when you s start setting up your timing for your uh, defensive strategy, you want to time it around the Shadow Bolt. Which, that's your main offense thing, because Doom, for all it's, it's really just a taunt. <laughs> and, uh, if the battle goes over, a, this, what I call the recommended time, um, uh -huh. it'll also act as your below 30% health damage. <laughs> but usually the battle ends long before that. In most cases, it will. If you're fighting like a boss or a lieutenant, sometimes you might have to cast it two times. But 
the real purpose of Doom is it helps you coordinate where you want your demons to go in the battle. Rather than them all massively hitting one guy, um, one of the things you learn as you play Demonology is how to plot out the battle using Doom. <laughs> and, uh, get into that more. But, um, so with Hand of Gold in, um, like when you're fighting, like, the speedy little guys, like the little rogues, might be more advantageous rather than sitting around waiting for three shards to build up. You only need one shard, you can cast that and keep casting more and more. <laughs> and, uh, as long as your Void Walker stays alive, that's going to give you both uh, offense and defense capability. Now, if you need more support for your imps, that's what the uh, Fell Hounds are for. And uh, they generally take two shards. And then, uh, then you have what I call all your. Uh, The next series of demons are, are not your pawns. Hand of Goldan and uh, Fellhounds are really just your pawns. And then, so starting with Biofiend, um, the bombarding bats, <laughs> and so far, and uh, more. Uh, these are where all your, like, call you your lieutenants or commanders. And uh, they do different things. Like, uh, The Bio Fiend is just a little bit stronger than, um, he's a little bit stronger than your, um, Wild Imps and your, uh, Fell Hounds, but they're a little bit weaker than your main, um, Demon, which in this case would be my Void Walker. And then, so, next to that would be, I call the Bat, I call the, um, Artillery Strike. What that is, is if your unit's being overrun by mobs, your little camp, wherever you're camped out at, that's what you use your, um, bat attack there. See, like, this guy coming in here? See, I have multiple guys. So this is what an AOE power allows you to do. So I put my fell lord out, because he basically stuns the hell out of people. <laughs> Crowd controller. But, uh... I'm going with my, uh... Twisted Nether power there. <laughs> One, because it's fun. But, uh... Since there were only really two mobs, I felt that would be the better power to go. But... Normally you use your bombers for that. If your position's being overrun, you use your bombers to come in and uh, land an uh, artillery strike on uh, the enemy. That usually gives your other powers time to uh, cool down. <laughs> and uh, your uh, demon tyrant what he's for is, um, he boasts your, cranks up your DPS by 15%. That's the base. So I don't know if that increases over time as the character grows or how it ties him to Azerite, but starts out with a 15% improvement. It's kind of cool. And then, um, I use the manual casting of the Fell Guard because I think... He's your main offensive weapon. Like, strike weapon. <laughs> and, uh... By main, I mean, he's your hard-hitting he offensive tool. Your imps, on the other hand, yes, they're... You, by main, they would be the first thing you cast. But, when you need more firepower, that's what the, uh... Fell guard is for. <laughs> and, uh... He's gonna come in and just start whacking people with his, uh, axe. <laughs> and, uh... 
to start swinging an axe. That's what you need. And then... Now, he has like a two-minute cooldown, but I never found that to be a hindrance. Even the Tyrant, I never found it to be a hindrance. At least thus far, at this point. And then you also have the, uh... The Observer, which you get from your, uh... War mode. What he does is he's your, uh... Crowd controller. And, uh... But he's mainly for magic type, uh, enemies. Whereas the Fell Lord is... He's there for a guard, basically. Anyone enters that area, he's gonna strike and stun, basically. That's what I think he's really designed to. Uh, at the time I've had to use him, that's how I kind of use him. <laughs> but he's mainly a guard. He's, like, you position him to protect your rear or flank. If you suspect as are gonna come from like that direction or you don't know, you put them out there. <laughs> you guard your position. At this point I'm walking around with a wand. <laughs> but um as I got further into the east side here, I went back to a staff. Now I haven't really played uh, the alliance side, I've mainly been on the horde side, but um, what I've seen with people posting on YouTube and streaming, um, I feel a Zandalar is a, a prettier place than uh, Calteris. Just from a sightseeing perspective, <laughs> a little prettier. You can tell by just looking at the sets for Calteris. It's an old country. They've been around a long time. <laughs> uh, their land is heavily explored. They live on an island, so, I mean, it's not like the people can go far. And then, uh, whereas here, even though know, it is an island, um, much of the area is, um, vastly unexplored. Still jungle. Go kill this dude. So I had to take my horse out. Stop off, talk to this what guy. Paid us thirty Zandala gold. I think it's kind of funny as you're walking up to this dude, a little brontosaurus. You just see his like leg walking up beside you. <laughs> it's like, what's going on in there? See, I'm using Shadow Boat to control my pacing. But 
with the guard out there. Got that guy. <laughs> Named Jabrakan. It's a Jabrakan man. <laughs> uh, pick up some herbs. Charms? Yeah, Our definitely kick that. Will be The thing where we grow the little guy. Collecting the herbs for this uh, growth, growth hormones. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here's a little bat power. See, so just use that to weaken up your foes. Personally, there are more than two. It's very useful power. One of the useful things with uh, demon pets is that while they're off fighting, you can go collect all the things you need. I was walking along I was thinking about different ways that I could defend against uh, people who spam stun you <laughs> and uh, got this idea if I stack all these different weak debuff powers um, it might be more useful than wasting uh, slots on these uh, anti-stun powers you only really need the um, Medallion for the anti-stun power.
this goes back to what I was saying earlier about uh, a couple videos go videos ago about um, when you're a demonology, once your demons are engaged in combat, you're really just a healer <laughs> with some tanky ability. And by tanking ability, I don't mean you got like massive armor because the demons are absorbing all the damage. But um, you're essentially just standing there and buffing and debuffing the foes. Buffing your demons, debuffing the foes, and uh, healing up your main demon. Um, if necessary. Although, in reality, it takes less energy to cast a new demon than it does to heal them. <laughs> right? So. But that is where I was reading along there. You can only uh, load those up when you're at an uh, inn. They say you can load those up at the beginning of a PvP event, but... When a person's ganky, I don't know of anyone that's gonna say, Oh, hold on a minute, let me let you load up all your defenses. <laughs> Yeah, let's go ahead. I'll wait. I haven't really seen that happen in the game. Coming up on the last... Uh, under 10 minutes here. So we finished collecting all this stuff. Just reordering my two bar here. Head back and uh, turn in the quest. Put it right there. Coconuts do migrate. <laughs> it's a uh, Monty Python uh, uh, homage. <laughs> Just a uh, growth hormone. The 
Last couple of missions all centered around hormones. We had to make a love potion, and now we're doing a growth hormone. <laughs> Whoever designed this area was really into uh, hormones and the endocrine uh, system in the human body. <laughs> sure if I messed around with my talents when I went back to the end, but I think I did because I reorganized my two-bar here. So I think I got rid of this. Took the curse of weakness, but I got had to figure out a where to put it on my two-bar in a way that was organized. Here's your little observer, dude. He's... That pet is designed for magic, dudes. Myself, I like having my toolbar organized. <laughs> I always group my uh, powers where they make sense. So I'm trying to think about where I'm going to put all this. That it makes sense. Apparently, that's a discussion for another date. See you next time. <laughs>